Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about how you can achieve depth in your landscape renders, especially if you're working with uh, real world dimensions. So I have already prepared um, a scene, uh, put them in different collections. So I've got my foreground, which is visible, my mid terrain and two separate mountain ranges at the back and I've textured them, put some trees on them and um, I will show you how they look like. But before we do that and before we do anything with Blender we need to uh, know about color theory and I'm not going to bore you for long but the only thing you need to know is that due to the way the human eye um, perceives perspective, warm colors like red, yellow, orange, green even, are seen or perceived as more being more in the foreground, standing out more, while things in the back gets more muted, gets colder. Um, we're talking about the blues, the grays, the magentas, the violets and things like that. So um, to put this uh, theory to a test, I've made some couple of test renders. So let's take a look at what I have here. So this is the scene you have just seen in Blender rendered out. Um, a couple of things. So I'm trying to get depth in here. And you know, we're talking about one, two, three, four separate terrains that are stacked uh, behind each other and we're talking about a real world dimension of at least two kilometers down down the perspective line but what I've done here is two things the first thing is I t took care that my trees in the foreground kind of fit of course um, this is a subjective matter but fit the overall um, scale of my foreground here and that the trees here and at the back furthest in the back are smaller of course so that already gives you some sense of scale but you can also see that my cliffs here are very dark and there is not a lot of contrast going on between something in the foreground and something in the background so um, I changed it to something more light and immediately you can see that this jumps out even more and um, then I put some grassy texture from the Berg pack um, on my terrain and I think that makes it pop even more is there one more yes so what I did with these two, I changed the light perspective or the light angle a, a little bit, uh, the clouds, which are an HDRI. And I have also changed a bit on the cliffs here and in my middle ground. So I've got a light to darkish and very dark here, um, color scheme going on uh, into the perspective. However, um, and I think you will agree, it's still not giving me a lot of depth perception. And this is what I want to show you right now. One option is to use a mist pass. And there are a couple of ways to set this up and I will try to show you how I'm doing that. So to do this, we need to do um, a couple of things. The first thing is, we need to go to our view layer properties and open our passes and actually in activate our mist pass. The second thing and what that does are two things. The first thing is that the mist pass is now visible in your uh, world properties and um, you could change them but you would not properly see what it does so when we need to um, activate our camera or just click it and here in the viewport display we also need to show mist because what it what it's doing now is 
it shows me the start and the end point of my my mist and I will go show you what that actually does so and last but not least we need to go into our compositor I've already set something up but let's get rid of all of that and do it um, do a fresh one because the simplest version to use a mist pass is of course we need an input which will be our render layers over here and we need an output of course we do so that's the composite um, we've got our image so we plug that into our image but here we've got our mist pass as well so what we're going to do is um, go and pick up a color ramp put the mist into the color ramp and now we need um, a mix node where the first image is the image we are actually going to render and the second one is the FEC from here which actually will and we can take a look and what that does is everything that is black is without mist and you can see how that change and everything that is white will be covered in mist okay so right now um, we would not see anything because we haven't rendered it and we haven't set our mist pass length um, properly so what we're going to do you can see now how my scene is actually set up foreground middle ground background one background two so what i want when i'm clicking on my camera uh, i don't actually need the camera i need the world properties i'm going to see where let's get just um where do i want my mist to start very slightly so but i would say something like in the middle of my foreground 270 looks about fine so that is that unfortunately you could use top view but your camera will always be angled somehow so after a while your the point where your mist pass ends will not be seen from the top so you need to work with your camera perspective a little bit so and then i want the end point of my mist pass which means that's where the mist is a hundred percent to be somewhere like uh, let's do something like this over here so i want the mist pass to be a hundred percent more or less at the beginning of my furthest terrain we only see a bit of that terrain anyhow but that's where i want it to be very very pronounced okay now um we've got our compositor set up and um let's do a render and see what it actually does that's set up and i will show you again is the simplest form of a mist pass just mix the mist together with your actual image let's see if this works in an acceptable time it does so what it does is um, it renders the original image and after that you know this uh, obviously um, the compositor will initialize and apply the mist and we will see um, the difference so we're already at sample 80 so it shouldn't be long um, it is and and don't be discouraged if your first setup of the mist pass is not successful it took me quite some time to figure this out and i'm pretty sure i haven't properly but that's what i'm going to show you wow that is the result of our mist pass setting so is it great no it's not 
But do I get more sense of depth and, pers and perspective? I think so. Now let's go back into our compositor and then with um, holding control, shift and click on the mix, you are going to activate the viewer for that note. I'm not sure why um, the my shortcut display is gone now, but obviously maybe, yeah, well, it's not um, available in this window. I'm sorry about that. Okay, now what can we do here? We can play with, so as I said before, if I'm changing that and we can now see it very clearly on the image itself, um, the back, this part here is completely hidden. So the mist is very thick in there and everything else is like a gradient in here. I could change that slightly by changing the black, which means no mist, but it's a little bit too much, of course. Secondly, we have set our color of the mist to white. So this is something you could change here, but even that doesn't look that good. So, and, and, and it's a pity that we've lost this part here. So this is where you can play with the different blending modes. So what if I'm going with lighten and we've got it back. So, and if I'm changing the color here, you can see quite rough and, and, and too much definitely that you can change the color in here. We can increase the mist over the mountains we set up, but I think we were pretty good with setting the length of our mist pass with, uh, where is it, um, 270 and 1650. You can play with that, that's an artistic choice, but that's what it is. Now um, screen, mm, no. Add is always um, a, a good option. So that's mix and this is add and add obviously works best here and it also gives you a much nicer colorization of your mist. So you know, let's stick with standard and have a very light um, bluish tint. Again, the great thing with that is everything we do here is also reflected already in our render because that's the composite and we could go to view layer. That would be our render, just the image. And over here, we've got it with our mist pass. Um, that's actually it. And you could, um, I would love if you would try um, that setup and you could just leave here. However, there are some ways to refine that setup. So what we can do is, um, what we can do is we have that for where we want our mist to be or the gradient of our mist along the perspective. So I'm going to copy that, put the mist pass here as well, and this is going to be my secondary, observe. this will be my secondary image. Now the color is gone, which is not a big issue because I now play with the mist and can colorize it in this color ramp. So what I'm doing now is the white, I want this bluish tint, like so very light. And this one, I want not to start with black, but with a darker blue, almost grayish, and maybe add a step in here, which will be even more having a magenta touch to it. And I can play with that now. And as you can see very slightly, because it is a It is very subtle. You can play with your individual or you can create your individual mist color grading in here while you control the way how much of that will be applied 
with these sliders here. Um, I've seen some people put normalized nodes in here. I don't really know what they do. I have a, a rough idea, but I don't see a lot of difference uh, when applying them. So I'm leaving them out um, for this tutorial. So this one being the amount and where it starts of our mist, like so, that looks actually good. And this is how the mist is actually colored. Add is a good option. Go and play around with the individual uh, blend modes. But um, yeah, that's it. And you could go and post process that uh, in any in Photoshop or any other process. Maybe do a tilt shift as well do some grass, more rocks and things like that. But I think that actually gives us a much better view or a much better idea of perception in our landscape than without it. Hope you enjoy, hope you find something useful in it. See you next time. Thanks for watching, bye.